Hey guys, a few of you have asked me, what does it take to launch a project? What does it take to go and actually build something out? And I'm actually in that process right now, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I take an idea from just sort of in the back of my mind to actually building something like this uh, app I'm working on called Clean JavaScript, which uh, it's not out yet, but it'll be out so shortly. How I take this and I build it, and I get to a point where it's no longer in my mind, but it's, but it's actually out there, and how I actually make sure that that gets accomplished. I want to thank our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. I've had the pleasure of visiting their Provo, Utah campus back in the day, as well as uh, talking with some of the management there, and they really are focused on getting their students prepped up and gaining the skills to join the working world and that's what I think a coding boot camp should be about. So if you're interested in checking out their quality assurance program, the UI UX, IOS, full stack web development program, I highly suggest you check them out at devmountain.com. So the first thing you want to do when you're trying to define a project that you're hoping to build is have a clearly defined goal. And that may sound silly, but it, it's pretty common for people to go and be like oh yeah this is what i'm going to do but they never actually go and think it out and what i mean by think it out is write it down i typically write it on a whiteboard but i've gone as far as to actually write down what our mission statement is right so if you've heard people say stuff about mission statements it seems silly but it gives you an idea of what you're trying to accomplish and helps you define what your mvp is your minimum minimal viable product essentially what you are trying to launch with and it, how you've met that goal and to do that, it will cause you to think out. And this isn't something that needs to be very complex. It's usually one, two, no more than three sentences as to what it's trying to do. So for clean JavaScript, what I, my objective was, was to go and build a site that people could see some best practices and standards in JavaScript. That's my objective. So once I've done that, I go and I figure out how I can uh, market, uh, excuse me, not market, but I figure out how I'm going to monetize the application. Now, why is that? Well, I'm a very big proponent that if you are making money on something, you're more likely to stay motivated with it. So when you saw earlier, what we were doing there was collecting emails. That's a simple thing that we can do to collect emails so that we can you know, notify people who are interested about updates and potential courses. You can see here we have um, my Facebook group, a, a link to the course, link to podcast support stuff. And eventually there'll probably be a little ad here um, from uh, Carbon Ad or from Google Sense Ad, but and you know ways to monetize it, right? And it's gonna keep you on track. And not every project needs to be monetized, but I would say, generally speaking, that there are non-intrusive ways to monetize that application, much like what you saw there, right? It's not spamming you with ads. It's not all up in your face. It's just this little piece off to the side. And that email thing, if you click it down, it doesn't pop up the next time. It comes again three months later, right? And if you've already submitted it, it never asks you again. So we have way, So once we have our objective, figure out how we're going to monetize it and not overly monetize it because that will kill anybody interested in working on what you're, you're doing there. Now, once we have that, the very next thing I do is I typically do some hand-drawn mock-ups of what it is I'm trying to accomplish. So you can see here that if I open this up, this is using a tool called Balsamic, but I'll typically draw this out by hand to have a rough idea of what it is I'm trying to accomplish. You're saying, Dylan, this looks like it takes a lot of time. Not really. Um, this whole process of sort of defining what it is I'm trying to do and what it is, it probably took me no more than two hours to come up with these three or four mocks of what I want to accomplish. And you can see here, some of these things are from, like this is from Pluralsight. I like some, some of what Pluralsight was doing and using that as inspiration as to what I want to accomplish. Now, now that we've gone ahead and done that and have an idea of what we want to build, you can start to build it feature by feature. And that's why you have these mocks also is you can, once you have an idea of what it is that you're trying to accomplish, we start breaking out pieces. And I think this is something a lot of junior developers struggle with that they can't look at this over, they can't look at 
the overall app quite yet and then figure out how they're going to build it. They just, they're overwhelmed by the whole idea of an application. Like they don't look at this and see a navigation bar. They don't look at this and see a header. They don't look at this and see a sidebar and an ad with an ad component, a share component, a course component, a support component, Facebook group component, podcast component, footer component, you know, code output component. Uh, in this case, we sort of changed this up, but this was going to be a word cloud component. They don't see that. They just get overwhelmed by the web app. So you start breaking out these pieces into various little, little bite size nuggets, right? Like you don't go and if this is dinner, <laughs> you don't go and say, I'm going to eat a whole turkey right now. No, no, no. It's like a little bit more like Thanksgiving where you get a little bit of like when I eat Thanksgiving, this is a weird analogy, but when I eat Thanksgiving, I eat a whole ton of cranberry, like it, cranberry sauce, and I get a little bit of mac and cheese. I have mac and cheese at my Thanksgiving. Not, I don't think a lot of households do that. Mac and cheese. <laughs> and then, you know, you, you sort of tackle each little piece at a time. And by the end of it, you have a full meal or a full web app, right? So you start doing that. Now, once you've done that, you figure out, um, you know, once you've broken that out, it may surprise you that like we haven't even written any code. You're like, okay, I'm building these pieces by piece. No, no, no. You actually need to, and part part of the whole thing about getting it out is actually getting it out, getting it out of here and putting it down. So typically, what I like to do is if I'm using GitHub, which usually I am, I'll go and I create these issues. So you can see we're up to like issue 85, and we have 25 open ones. And for organization purposes, things that I'm not super interested in doing right away, I might have a future state, right? So um, PR template, future state, uh, offline, online, PWA status, future state, um, DevOps test runner, future state, right? Stuff like that. Um, although I think I can sort of mark that done. And then some things that, hey, I know I went a little bit fast and I want to circle back these before launch checks where now we start creating those items that th these usually won't be right when you get going. But this is for me like, hey, I'm getting pretty close to having this wrapped up, but I know I did some shady stuff. Like I, I wasn't paying attention to mobile friendly. So I want to go ahead and, and check that out. So you start organizing these items and get it all out of here because what happens is that you typically forget about things. You typically are busy or you're working on it. And this is a side project most of the time, right? Say so you're full-time gig. Very few of you are going all in on a side project. You're studying code. You're building something. You're working a job. You're going to school. You're, you know, this is just something you do for fun, whatever it may be, but you get it out of your head and you get it onto paper. Now, once you start building it piece by piece, you start you get it out there. And I think people are too, too often want it to be perfect before they launch it. It's much better to launch some, something imperfect than to never launch something perfect, if that makes sense. And, you know, once you get out there, you'll start to see what people actually care about and what people want to change and, you know, what you'll have to figure out what that is. But the general idea is figure out what it is you want to do, figure out a way to monetize it, uh, you know, in a fair way. Uh, fair, honest, and non-intrusive, obnoxious way. Uh, figure out what it is you're going to do piece by piece and then get it out. Like those four steps. And if you follow that, you'll do pretty good. And that's typically how I go about any project I'm working on, whether it's the YouTube channel, whether it's the podcast, whether it's a course, whether it's this project, whatever it may be. I follow those four steps. And I found that to be pretty, pretty helpful in getting it out of this thing I want to do to something that I am doing. Uh, once you sort of break out all the pieces. Now, another thing I would say that typically I don't work with other people on projects because I like to go at my own rate. And that's another reason I like to go and create these issues and things like that. Cause I may work a ton for two weeks and then drop it for six weeks. <laughs> uh, I may work a ton for two weeks and come back a week later. And I, I'm not going to remember exactly where I was at. So, um, you know, figure out what system works best for you and go with it, but have a system, right? You don't necessarily have to do things the way I do them, but if you just do things, uh, like I'm just doing it, uh, you'll oftentimes find that you're not doing it. You know, like, you're like, yeah, hey, I'm, I'm just going to do it. Have you done it? No, but I'm going to do it. All right. So figure out what works for you and then go with it. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you found this helpful and I hope it helps you to get those ideas, those side projects off the back burner and onto the, um, this front burner thing onto the front burner into the fire, baby. And uh, do that as always, please subscribe 
I'm trying to get that hashtag road to 100,000. It's a big goal of mine. Looking forward to that. I got links to my courses in the description below. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my latest course, the 100 Front End Interview Questions Challenge to make sure that you ace those front end interviews. Smash that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.